Here is a simple test of inflammability being applied to a range of materials. A lighted match is dropped on a sample of the fine woolen material called georgette, and another on a sample of natural silk. The materials are raised from the bench so that air gets to both sides. The next match is dropped on a cotton print dress material, and the last one on cotton wool. Cotton wool used for fancy dress has been a cause of fatal accidents, for like all fluffy materials, it ignites easily. The cotton print is still burning. The natural silk has gone out. The match has simply burnt a hole and fallen through, and the wool too has stopped burning now that its match has burned out. Cotton print, being pure cellulose fibre, burns about as readily as paper and can be extinguished as easily as paper. All materials burn faster vertically than they do horizontally, but pure natural wool is so hard to burn that even a hot gas flame takes time to set it going. Nylon, the middle sample, also fails to maintain flame. At the end is a net of the type responsible for recent accidents, one fatal, in Wellington, Nelson and Dunedin. Samples from the three dresses concerned have been obtained by the Dominion Laboratory. The chief organic chemist, Mr. C.W. Brandt, suspends a piece of the deadly dress material for a vertical burning test, and also, for comparison, a piece of plain, unlacquered cotton net. The plain net burns rapidly for all nets are bad fire risks. But the lacquered floral net will be seen to burn much more fiercely. One problem is to find out why this net burns so fiercely. And Mr. Brandt, suspecting that the lacquer finish is responsible, puts some of the material into an evaporating dish and pours on acetone solvent. In 30 or 40 seconds, the acetone dissolves away the pattern and the stiffening. The extract is put on a steam bath to evaporate away all the acetone and an electric hairdryer switched on to drive away the vapour. After a few minutes, the material with which the net was stiffened and decorated is left as a dry skin in the bottom of the dish. Chemical tests show that the lacquer is of cellulose nitrate with a filling of aluminium powder. Cellulose nitrate is best known as the chief constituent of celluloid, a notoriously inflammable substance. Now a piece of celluloid cinematograph film is burnt followed by a piece of the foreign dress material and another piece of film. All burn about equally fast and fiercely. Here is something not quite so dangerous, an unstiffened cotton net on which only the pattern contains cellulose nitrate. The flame gets hotter each time it reaches an area of pattern. Although reputable shops are withdrawing these dangerous materials from sale, it is not yet illegal to sell them. These research department tests are a warning to all who wear party frocks to test materials they buy. For it's all too easy for a dress to encounter a spark from a match or brush against a radiator. That blaze comes from just one yard of the cellulose nitrate lacquered net which caused a recent fatality. And there might be a dozen yards in a dress. This deadly dangerous foreign material has been on sale in many parts of New Zealand. Here again are the safe materials. Pure wool, which is so safe that it is used for firemen's uniforms, and next to the wool, a stocking of genuine nylon. For contrast, there is the most dangerous material of all, net stiffened and decorated with cellulose nitrate lacquer. The general rule is that all nets and all fluffy materials should be suspect. Only pure wool, pure silk and nylon burn with enough reluctance to be called safe in respect of fire. The crowd 35,000 rugby enthusiasts. The place, Athletic Park Wellington, not Ellis Park, Johannesburg. The game, the first test, Australia versus the All Blacks holding the fort at home.
Australian captain Trevor Allen introduces his team to the Governor-General, and Peck stands awaiting for the first test played at Athletic Park since 1937. Today, Johnny Smith leads New Zealand. Then away and from the kickoff, the ball goes down to Brockoff. Brockoff gives it to Cross, but he runs into touch. From the line out of ruck forms, the New Zealand forwards break it back to Bevan. Bevan to Couch, and Couch cuts in beautifully. Knock on, scrum it back, says the referee. Out it comes to Bevan again, Bevan to Couch, Couch to Dobson, Dobson to Smith. Smith tries to go through, but he's caught in midfield, and they ruck round it. Lay swings back to the other end of the field, and from this line out, Wyndon breaks through and crashes over for a brilliant try for Australia. Causey's free shot at goal misses, so Australia lead New Zealand by three points to nil. After this, the black forwards break through, led by Munn, but poor handling robs both teams of many chances. The Australians swing into the attack. Allen gives it to Davis, but Davis drops the ball. Smith kicks it ahead, but Burke secures. He tries to go through in his own, then passes infield to Cottrell. He can't do anything with it, but from loose play following this ruck, Garner gets it and goes over for Australia's second try. Causey takes the kick. No, Australia six, New Zealand nil. this line out, Australia rake it back to Burke. Burke to Emery. Emery to Davis, who's come outside him. Davis sells the dummy, cuts in, but his pass is intercepted by Couch, and Couch is off up the centre of the field. He passes to full back Orr. Orr makes ground, then passes to Kelly. Kelly's caught flat-footed and can't get going. He hands it to Smith. Smith comes inside, but is well tackled. And from this unlikely-looking position, Australia score. Watch wing three-quarter Garner. <laughs> succeeds to make the half-time score Australia 11, New Zealand 0. In the second spell, Allen kicks off for Australia. It goes down to Bevan. Bevan kicks high and follows up. From the ruck, Bevan secures it again. He hands it to Dobson, who makes ground, then passes to Smith. Kelly's blocked, so Smith kicks high. Emery misses it, and it bounces awkwardly for Australia. No, Allen gets there first and forces. Kelly has a chance with a penalty for New Zealand. Yes, it's over, Australia 11, New Zealand 3. New Zealand are trying hard to even up the score, but the Australian defence is holding. Now the ball comes to Couch, Couch gives it to Dobson, Dobson throws it round the back of his neck, then gives it to Smith, Smith runs up to his man before passing to Kelly, but Kelly's well blocked. secure the ball and scored a controversial try. Watch more on the far wing and see what you think. It's a try, says the referee. Kelly has a free shot, but it's wide. So there it is, Australia 11, New Zealand 6. A fine effort by the youthful Australian team and the first time the All Blacks have been defeated on Athletic Park. Oh, let's go home and listen to the cricket.